Hi there, welcome to Creating Sips Virtual Paint. My name's Coleman. I'm going to be instructing you through Kandinsky's Circles, um, also known as Color Study Squares with Concentric Circles. Um, it's a very fun painting. It's great for all ages and anyone who has never painted before. This is a lot of fun because it allows you to play with color. Uh, Kandinsky was a very interesting artist. He didn't get started until his 30s when he saw Monet's haystacks. So he was originally a lawyer in Russia and when he witnessed uh, Monet's haystacks he decided he wanted to do art. He was a great musician and he wanted to express music through color. Uh, he had what's known as synesthesia, which allowed him to be able to see sounds as color. So in his paintings, he would explore with things like uh, allowing the hue or the color to represent a, a pitch, uh, the, the tone within the, the painting to create the, the timbre of the music, so like to be dark and brassy or mellow still. So he played a lot with that and used saturation of color to be the volume. So the brighter the color, the louder it was. So Kandinsky circles, he played a lot with that and it was a great study and it makes for a great master study, especially as an introductory painting for everyone to work through because all you do is play with color. You get to play with your brushes and see what those do for you and mix colors and see what you get out of that. So there's a lot of fun things you can do that you really can't mess up. So I invite you to paint along with me and recreate uh, Vasily Kandinsky's color study squares within concentric circles. So if you've ordered the uh, craft or crates to go kit uh, from me, you should in your box have a 11 by 14 inch canvas that's got a, uh, a prime background here with a, a little earthy tone we do that so that uh, some of our colors will really pop off there and it should ha it'll have some uh, squares traced on through there uh, in your kit you'll also have uh, paints uh, paper that your canvas is wrapped up in that you can use to set on your tabletop so you can paint if you don't have uh, an easel or even a set underneath your easel so you don't get paint all over yourselves. Uh, if you need in, or if you got the uh, the painter's kit with your creates to go kit you'll have a set of brushes, um, you'll have a tray and some paints which will look quite like this, maybe better in this camera here. Yes, there we go. Uh, so in these little containers, as well as this little palette, it's quite nice. You can use a paper plate if you want to also. You can mix right out of these, pull and paint right out of those, or you can also uh, pour them into your thing, your palette there and, and mix them up through there. Um, I've also usually carry around, have a, uh, an old stick this is an old paintbrush. I use that for, for mixing. A lot of times I'll just mix right on the canvas. But I'm, if I am trying to make a specific color, I'll just mix it right through there. Uh, with your kit, you'll have some brushes. You'll have, uh, this kit has five brushes. Normally use three if you come and paint with me in the studio. Uh, but this gives you a nice little set so that you can get into painting and paint at home. Uh, so with these, you'll have a nice large brush. Uh, which is great for doing backgrounds. Uh, this is a three-quarter inch flat. Uh, it's also very narrow there, so you can get some really great stuff out of there. In my kits, you will also have this little thing here that helps you to keep your brushes in. Um, I got inspired to make and send these. Uh, I got this with my, gra with my grandmother's painting kits that uh, was given to me, which passed, and I was like, that is great. Why not give everyone one of these? So you should have one of those, and if you don't have one, they're really easy to make if you've got access to a saw and just a scrap piece of lumber. Uh, anything that'll help to keep those little guys from rolling across the table is great. So onto the brushes, you've got a large brush, 
And if you've got your own brushes, these are the ones that we're going to use. Um, my kits, you've got, they're called brights uh, or and also as flats. They are square and they have a flat top. And then you've got a filbert, which means that the top is rounded. So you can see how it's rounded up at the top as compared to flat one there. And, and as you play with these brushes, you can learn that you can get a lot of different lines and, and clean edges with your paints as you use them. So with the, the filbert, it's more using the tips of the bristles to make your line rather than using the edge bristles there. And, uh, and we'll, you can play with that with this, uh, this painting. Uh, it's really great painting just for playing. And then the last one is the little small round brush that we'll be using for a lot of detail work, any of those little smaller uh, little circles that we may want to make through there. So along with uh, the things that you should have in the kit, you will need a couple things from home. One is a jar of water, a couple of extra paper towels, and a little roll of paper towels, and something I like to have on hand when working with acrylic paints is a, a little mister. It's just a little uh, mister here that you can use. You can spritz it onto your paints, which I've got mine uh, poured into my palette here. And so you can really just give it a little mist. This isn't like a squirt bottle that sends out uh, a lot of uh, heavy droplets. This mists it. Um, an atomizer, I believe, is, is what some folks would call it. So um, we've got jar, water, extra paper towels, mister, apron or shirt that you don't mind getting any paint on, canvas, easels if you've got uh, those, or you can simply lay it flat down on a tabletop, maybe throw some paper, uh, newspapers underneath and then the paper that comes with uh, with the kit. You could even use the box if you want to unfold that and lay that down. Um, trying to figure out a way to maybe turn those boxes into easels. So uh, figure that out. You will have to come back to YouTube and check that out. So um, as I pay through this with you, uh, this is live streamed so I won't be able to answer any of your messages. But if you've got any questions, uh, or, well, if you need to, you can pause or rewind to go back and, and uh, go back through a step. This painting, you shouldn't need to do too much of that as we paint through because there won't be a whole lot of, you know, do this just like this. Because um, we'll be just playing with color, mixing and blending and, and a lot of fun stuff like that. So uh, as you paint along, if you do still need to, you can pause, rewind, and then catch up. I'll paint at a pace that everyone should be able to follow along with uh, fairly reasonably. Uh, but I do paint along pretty quick. I like to work while my paint's a little wet. Um, a little bit about the acry acrylic paints. Um, they are slightly water soluble, so you can add some water to them to thin them down, make them uh, move across the canvas a little bit easier. Um, they do dry fairly quickly too, so it doesn't take too long for things to dry before you can then paint back over the top of it, in which you can then do a, a wet on dry or a dry on dry. Uh, I work a lot of wet on wet, uh, which is both paints are still wet while I blend, and I'll talk even more about that as, as we go through. So I don't mean to overwhelm anyone who has never painted before and you're joining and you're like, oh, Coleman, I don't know what you're talking about. Um, You'll figure it out once we, once we get to painting. So uh, if you've got everything that you need, the last thing that we need is our sips. So grab your favorite beverage, um, your brushes, ah, paint. Uh, we'll be using white, red, blue, yellow, green, violet, and orange. Uh, the kit will come with those. Uh, we won't be using any black in through this. I'll show you how to make a, a darker color that will be close to black with some of the stuff that we're using. But I don't normally use black to blend colors unless I'm using it for outlines or making dark stuff. Um, 
So if, if you're like, if you want to use black, you're more than welcome to if you've got black, but this kit won't have black in it. It will have the primaries, secondaries, uh, as well as then the white. Um, so uh, let's cheers to creating. Sip whatever you've got and get your things together and uh, let's get to painting. Okay, so uh, we've got squares drawn on through here. Uh, if you're using your uh, tools at home that you've got your materials or you've got a couple kits um, and you've got some, some canvases, this is done with a, uh, a raw umber, just a light wash over it to, to give a, an earthy tone under uh, painting there to make the colors uh, stand off there quite a bit. Uh, you may not be able to see it very well through there. Uh, it's just very, very light pencil. Um, and so with Kandinsky's circles, they are just a color study. So each one of these squares, which there's four of them on here, his original is uh, uh, larger than the 11 by 14 canvas, and he's got, um, I believe it's six or nine, um, 12 maybe, squares on his. So what I like to do with this painting as I go through it is start with the background color of one and and then kind of build on it. And then you can move on to the next square or work them kind of separate, you know, all at the same time if you like. But one thing you, I like about this, as I said before, is it allows you the chance to blend your colors and, and figure out how to, to mix them right on the canvas. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take that large brush, that, uh, that medium, uh, or I'm sorry, that, that three quarter inch uh, flat, and I'm just going to kind of g gently mash it down in my water jar there. And one thing you will want to make sure that you do is keep your brushes clean and uh, don't set them in your water jar for too long. That way you keep your bristles looking good and you can clean them with just a little bit of some Dawn soap or hand soap. Uh, to get that out. So first thing I want to do is maybe just a little bit of water. I may tap some of that out on my paper towel right into that top left hand corner there. And then I'm going to take a little bit of white and a little bit of yellow on my brush here. And I'm going to start really just by kind of mixing right in the center there. So making this uh, this kind of light yellowish color. Oh my gosh, really cat? Sorry, the cat just knocked over uh, my sit. Smooth one. Man, go. Step out on that and knock that over. All right, so we've got paper towels here. Let's just soak that up. It scared me though. I thought something filled, but it was just a drink. Okay, so back to it. The large brush. I had a feeling those cats would make an appearance and of course in the first video quite uh, in style. So as you would imagine when it comes to blending colors and mixing them, I'm not going to rinse my brush as I build this first color here. Um, because I am going to mix as I go. So you've already got some red and and orange there, as you know, yellow and red make orange. But I'm gonna take some of my orange and build that in through the outside here. And find that edge of my square up a little bit of yellow up through there.
I'm gonna have that little yellow center with some orange in through there. And grab a little bit of red and maybe come out through the outside. And it doesn't take a whole lot to work these colors through. Now you can really eat up a lot of those blended colors if you're not careful. Um, so if you need to, you know, as I as I get too much red on there, I'll grab a little bit of yellow, and then I can mix that in through there. I'm gonna wipe off some of that red first. Get rid of some of that. If you think you've got too much, and wipe some of that off, and then just put that yellow right into that orange. I'm gonna work these warm colors first. That's the yellow and the orange and the red. And then I'm going to come back in with some uh, cool colors over the top of it. But while that dries, I'm going to work on the next set there. So I've still got some yellow on my brush. A little bit of orange, too. That's all right. Because uh, I'm going to come out to these outside corners here with that red. And if you need to, if you get a little drippy drew or something like that going on, you can uh, use a paper towel to wipe that up real quick. Just dip it in your water jar, wring it out, wipe it right off your canvas. Um, or you can uh, dry it. Uh, I've got state-of-the-art paint drying systems here in the studio that I use, uh, which most people refer to them as hair dryers. But uh, I use those to, to quick dry anything that I might need and then come back in and paint right over the top of it. So if you like, uh, these canvases that I use, they are gallery wrapped, which means that the staples are on the back, not on the sides. So you can actually paint your edges as you go along. Now one thing that's nice about using uh, you know, these easels, or if you're on the table, you, know, you can rotate these around in any way you need to to get to any edge or spot that you need. So I'm gonna get that red around my edge there. It's a really nice blend there. Work that nice in wet on wet. So I didn't let my paint dry too fast while I worked that in through there. You'll notice it'll get kind of tacky when it, it gets uh, dry uh, and is not quite dry yet. I'm going to lightly brush some more red over through there, exhaust some of that out, but I'm not touching it too much because I don't want to uh, make it too bright of a red right through there. So that looks pretty nice. Kind of show you up really close in through here how those colors look. Boy, that light's not great. Well, hopefully yours looks really good. Um, artificial light makes your colors look different. So if you're painting near an open window, you should have some really great color that shows. So I rinse my brush out, gently massaging it down in the bottom of my water jar. And I add the wipe the excess water off on my paper towel here. So the next one I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this blue that I've got. And I'm first of all going to tint it down with some white. So what you can do is you can take some of your, your white like I've got here and I'm going to bring it over right here in front of my blue and that way I can then grab a little bit of blue and white at the same time. And then right here I'm going to just make this whole square a light blue and if you need a little bit of water and I'm just going to blend those in. So in, as Kandinsky did you can think of uh, of this as as expressing music so if you've got some some tunes going on right now or you can hear the uh, the instrumental music I've got going in my background, you can maybe kind of represent that in each of these squares. Uh, if you've watched the Disney movie Fantasia, 
I really love that movie, and I love this, the part where they represent the sounds of the orchestra as, sound, as, as shape and color. And I don't recall who it was exactly, a uh, well-known artist, that, that explained painting really is, is nothing more than lying to the eye with shapes and color. And so representing anything through shapes and color, you can create pretty much anything through shapes and color. I mean, there's so many artists that have done so many things. And I mean, Kandinsky was a lawyer before he became an artist. And he was a well-known artist. Uh, inspired by Matisse, he knew Picasso. Um, so, you know, if you've, if you've never painted or you had, uh, you know, you loved it when you were in high school and for some reason you got out of it, it's never, never too late, my friends, to continue exploring that creative side. I'm going to get the top of my edge here. All right, so we've got a light blue background. You don't have to have a light blue, black, blue background in yours if you don't want to. This is your painting. You can change it up some if you want. You know, this this one thing is, you know, as I've said, this I like about this painting is, is you can can explore and express yourself. Uh, have fun with that. So let's see, I am now going to dive into a little bit of some purple. I haven't rinsed my brush out from some of that white and blue. Uh, it'll, it'll change the tint a little bit on that, on that purple. But as I lay that on, I can then come back in and, and, and make it darker if I want. So I'm going to make use of that thin edge of this brush here. And if you've ever done any calligraphy or, or drawn in the drawn in the sand, kind of, you can use that edge and spin it between your fingers to make a thin line. You don't have to break out another brush and, and dirty it. So I like this. I'm thinking of this as music. You know, maybe this is like a bass, bass line in through there. And the orange and the, the yellows, those are uh, or maybe uh, drums and uh, uh, cymbals, top hat, snare drum in through there. So we're going to bring a little bit of that. Oh, that was actually. some of that excess off of there. I want to tint that a little bit, make maybe a lighter purple color. One thing you can really play with too in this painting is proportions of colors. So different colors look good with other colors and depending on how much of each color you'll get a different look from things. So if you've got equal purple and yellow it'll look really odd to the eye but a little bit of yellow and a lot of purple or a lot of yellow with a little bit of purple uh, the proportions in through there uh, are appeasing to the eye. So let's play in through here some more. I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually make this purple now a little wider out to the top. I'm gonna grab some white. I'm gonna make kind of a lilac-y color. And if you want to change colors in through there, your red and blue make Purple, so you could just put some purple in on top of uh, 
Our blue, mix some blue in with some red. I like having those kind of come off the edge there. It doesn't have to be perfect. You paint over the edge, then that's all right. You get a closer look at Kandinsky's original there, and it's not clean edges around each of those squares. So don't worry about that. There's more to this than... Uh, So I got these edges painted. I like to bring that stuff around there. It breaks that kind of two-dimensionality of, of things, and, and quite not quite 3D, but a little bit of it. Does yeah. Get that around the edge through there. that off some and I'm going to make a great big red swath inside of this this light blue uh, one here and that's dried with the touch I didn't get any on there I'm be kind of loose in this circle here so it's not perfect it's very organic. And as I fill that in, so this is one where I'm going to kind of maybe work a little bit while that's still wet. Maybe add just a tit, tit bit more red in the center there, and then I'm going to grab a little bit of some blue. And I'm just going to spin my brush and my fingers. I'll work this out a little bit. There we go. I'm going to grab some more blue if you like. And that mixture of that red and blue will give you a purplish color. You can even grab a little bit of wide in through there and tint that out. You spin your brush, you get some really neat effects like it's a uh, the inside of a jawbreaker or something, you know? So let those dry and I'm going to do this one over here in a green. I'm just going to go just straight into my green here. And I'm just going to paint that square in solid green. I almost got a little drip there, but I saved it. So we're going to do that painted in. In fact, I'm going to flip this around and make it a little easier on myself. Like that. Just like that. Spread that green around through there. So this is kind of a thalo, or uh, I believe this brand calls it an emerald green. But if you've got like a green oxide, you can you know, definitely paint with that. Use my edge here to I'm gonna paint that in a little clean hole in the same direction to get rid of some of those brush strokes. Brush strokes aren't bad. It's called being painterly if you purposely paint to show your brush strokes. Some struggle and work hard to make you see them, others work hard so you don't. So you can be either or. Bring that around the sides. Alright. I've got this 
it's green. Rinse that off. So here, let that dry. And let's explore some of these other brushes here. I'm gonna grab my filbert brush. That's the one with the rounded point there. Gently massage that down in the bottom of the water there. Loosen up those bristles. So this will give me a, a narrower edge through there. Um, it's also got the narrow edge, but that roundness of uh, the, the, the tips there is what uh, works best for, for kind of making some of those circles that we'll be doing in through there. Lines and edge work uh, in through there. So I'm going to grab a little bit of white and blue. And this blue I'm using tonight is an ultramarine blue. to that to make that light. I'm going to add some around the outside of this purple. So that's the same color blue, but you can already tell that in placement of some of these other colors, it looks different. Especially where that light blue is against that yellow is not quite as bright as that light blue against the orange or that purple there. Color theory is a lot of fun when you, you get to, to play in with things and, and especially you get into the psychology of colors and uh, there's a lot to be told on like what color someone's house is. And, and such like that so I don't judge I just make observations and really just trying to find ways to create different ideas so now as you paint along especially if you've got uh, an easel uh, I always recommend taking a step back every once in a while see how it all looks from a distance you do get color blending, uh, optical blending that happens uh, from distance is very much kind of the same thing as when you uh, are driving around, you see mountains out in the distance, you know, that are a lighter shade than those that are closer to you. So you, um, wait, yeah, that's atmospheric perspective. It would, when you step back, it, uh, you get color blending uh, that happens. Uh, I usually step back and squint one eye while uh, while closing the other one, so that I can see what it looks like. Because up close, you're going to be your own worst critic, and you know, don't be. Someone judges you on something, tell them that you worked really hard to make that just look just like that. Okay. Back into the filbert here. Uh, let's throw some green around the outside of this red. And red and green, when they mix, they make a, an interesting dark color. Um, If I am ever painting a scene that has uh, grass or something in there and I need to make some shadow within that grass, I usually grab a little bit of red to do that. And that's that's that complementary or, or uh, you, you know, using the color wheel to make other colors. So if you don't have purple or orange, but you've got red blue, you be, should be able to make most all colors 
within the rainbow with that. And so, you know, don't think when you get into painting, you've got to go buy, you know, 15 different colors or the 40, 48 set colors. Really, all you need is the three colors and white and black, and you're good to go. You don't even usually need black most of the time, too, if you know how to make black. You can mix all the colors together to get uh, most of your browns. Um, but I do recommend, if you're going to get started, of, of going ahead and getting, uh, you know, uh, like cadmium red, cadmium yellow, uh, thalo blue and thalo green. Those mix well, really well together, although they, they're kind of uh, translucent. So an ultramarine blue is nice to have uh, on the side also. Uh, uh, a hooker's green along with thalo green if you want different shades of green uh, as well as even having the uh, Boy, I just said it here not too long ago. Um, the other greens. Um, violet uh, is nice to have so you don't have to mix purples all the time. Um, and uh, raw umber uh, works really well. That's what I've got for this background is wash. And then, you know, if you wanted to get some uh, uh, a yellow okra and a Payne's gray. It's kind of a blued gray. Uh, but that's really nice for, for building in some dark areas on, on different paintings so that you can then come back in with, uh, with either black or white uh, to create an extra darker shadow or uh, to create highlight. Um, so usually eight to ten colors is about all I ever use and I mix what I, what I, I need. If I'm ever doing something that I need a specific color for then I'll go out and buy it. But most of the time I don't. I might get color blending and mixing. It's a science. More of a science than an art. More of an art than a science. Because you could, yeah, play with it and just get all sorts of fun things to happen. So I'm going to go Let's put that light white that I put there is now going to let that blue stand on quite a bit brighter. Um, I'm going to make I'm going to make kind of a wavy line of blue out and through this one. Just let that color exhaust out through there. You get some really neat blending. Let that background color kind of come through there. big circle on this one. Now that blue and that green make a nice dark color. that in with some other colors. I'm going to bring that around to my edges here. And that edge should be dry enough for me to turn this around. And get my top edge side edge now. still wet there that I picked up. 
that's all right. Just adds to it. Sometimes the best things are accidentally on purpose, and the hardest part is purposely doing it on accident. Again. purple here and I'm going to darken it up with a little bit of red I've still got a little bit of uh, that blue and white on through there that's right because I want that to uh, mix as I lay that in yeah so now one thing that you can get when it comes to mixing colors is if you start mixing too much or uh, not letting something dry before you put other colors in on top of it. You can get a muddying of your colors. Other times you can get muddying of your colors uh, by simply having like two different brands of colors or two colors that don't quite mix uh, the best. Um, and so some of that is work, working like a warmer color into a cooler color. So warm blue into a cool blue um, or you know you can get, well, working a warm blue into a cooler yellow will make a muddy green. Where the other way, you know, a cool and with a cool, you can get. But that's color theory. I mean, you just got to kind of play with it, practice it, and and, uh, and have fun with it to, to really fully understand and appreciate, um, yeah, color. It's, it's an amazing thing. I really feel for those who don't see color, because I've been always excited when I heard about the, uh, the glasses that could, uh, could allow them to see color, because just like as an artist, I don't know what I would do if I couldn't, well, I know what I would do if I couldn't see color. I would, I would still create stuff, but probably not with the greatest color palettes. Um, I would use that as, as, as definitely as my excuse as an artist for, for looking crazy, maybe. So I'm just playing here with a little bit of that extra white. I put in the center around that one through there. Rinse this brush out, grab my large brush and start painting on those top pieces there. So and if you need to, this is a great time to take a break or press that pause button. You know, maybe paint in through there if you need. So we'll take a little break from here and then we'll come back in in just a bit. So we're going to come back in and start with these, filling in these top three squares. Then we can come back in and add some more colors into our bottom uh, three squares uh, as once we get some of that going on. Um, what's a color I haven't played with in my background yet? I'm going to lay in a mass of purple. I'm actually going to put that above, well what's now above would have been below my orange and red. And so you can definitely see with this purple as I lay this on 
how translucent it is and there are some colors that you will get that really no matter what brand it is they go on kind of thin and it's not the grade of the paint uh, really what it is is just the way paints are made you get um, pigment that is then suspended in your medium and sometimes it takes a lot of pigment to to make that color yellows purples some reds and sometimes too if it's difficult to get a hold of the certain materials and ingredients but I lay this on a thin coat of it here and Once that dries, a second coat will put a more of a pure hue of color in through that. Still got some purple on there, so it'll change that color just a little bit. And I'm picking up a little bit off of the one next to it, that's okay. So and even though you know these are concentric circles and Kandinsky painted them as concentric circles. You can paint them as whatever shapes you want. Uh, for Valentine's, we did this painting and did each of them as different colored hearts based inside of each other. And someone that day did just a whole bunch of different shapes and neat things. And that just goes to show, you know, that artists, they can do whatever you want with your pieces. Now, if you want to make it look exactly like something else, you know, you you can practice and get that, you know, uh, ability. But artists can see things a little differently and at times you get started on one idea and your mind will go, hey, you know what else I see in that? And then you can chase that. All right, so we've got a little bit of red in there. I'm gonna add, while well, I've got some red on my brush, I'm gonna make a, Let's start with a small circle. I'm just going to spin my brush, lay that red in through there. Wipe some of that off. And then underneath my green, we're going to do do a full orange. We got some of those contrasting colors next to each other. Green and orange, red and blue, purple and uh, yellow. So I'm just going to go heavy in on my orange. And you can load your brush, which means, you know, getting uh, a little bit onto each side there. Take this around so I can get to those edges. what kind of music you all are listening to and what colors you're choosing for your squares. 
really love it if you shared pictures of your your finished paintings uh, with me uh, you can share them with 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 us on our Facebook page So I got some orange there. I'm going to take some of this orange while I've got it. And I'm going to make a fat line in my purple here. Wipe some of that excess off there. Grab another little amount. Get that side edge just a little bit. There we go. I'm going to let that dry just a little bit. And as I do, I don't know where that white paint came from. I'm always getting paint on myself. That's why I wear an apron. I'm not tired of having really nice painting clothes. I'm going to tint down some of this red. It's going to make some pink. But while that's still wet, I'm going to Just a little bit of water makes a big difference. You get too much water, you can get some interesting drips that can happen. You can play with that and make like watercolor effects if you wanted to. brighter and brighter pink towards the center here. Then I have this really bright pink around this dark red. And I'm gonna go to another brush real quick. Let's go to that filbert again. Actually, let's go to the medium smallest square brush. Too. That's how you can get some muddying of colors, is, is overworking uh, some blending of colors or, or the placing of one in there on another color. And then I'm just going to go right around this inside edge with the narrow part of that brush just lay down a little thick layer. You could use your, your uh, little tiny liner brush for this kind of work if you wanted to. I kind of like to challenge myself on being able to paint small lines with, uh, with a big brush. Um, you know, as, as Bob Ross said, with enough practice you could paint the Mona Lisa with a two inch house brush. I am like, that's a lot of practice, Bob. And, and I mean, he painted a lot, but I don't have time for that kind of uh, painting and commitment there. Wish I did. So my orange is still wet, so I'm gonna let that kind of set for a little longer. I'm gonna play down here in my bottom colors there. Um, I like that little bright we're bring in a 
dash a wide in through here. And it doesn't have to be perfect circles again, you know? So th that one's going to be kind of a little irregular shaped. some orange in here too. So I'm going to add a little bit on my brush and right along that outside darkest green there that we made with blue and green in there. Yeah. Looks good. How's yours looking? Wait, sip. And then create. I'm gonna add a little green on here on this bottom right one. Just inside of that blue line. you'll get to see where once you put a color on things will start to look different because as you put colors next to each other they may change the way that uh, that they may look change the intensity of it uh, or the brightness of it so I'm going to attempt to make kind of a bright lime green. So I'm going to mix a little bit of yellow in with my green. Maybe grab a little bit of white. There we go. That's kind of what I'm looking for. Oh yeah. Nice little bit of bright, pur bright, bright green next to that purple. Maybe a little bit on there. I don't want to get too crazy with it, but I do want to put some in here on this orange. May not be dry enough, but let's see what happens when we start putting it on. Okay. Just gonna gradually grow this out. I've got that green. I want to make a dark color. So a little green, a little red, a little purple. Right in through there. A little bit more of being kind of muddied ugly color but it's a nice little dark color I'll live with it so 
So if you are holding your pallet, do be careful in the you know, direction you hold. If you want to pour it out onto your feet or your floor, especially if you're painting in, in a carpeted area. This paint, it will stain if you get it someplace that you don't want it. That's why I recommend wearing an apron. Add some yellow in on top of this orange. It's nice and bright on there. that in with that bright green that I made earlier. Maybe add a little bit of white. You can put white on the center of your brush and then as you twist that, then that'll just deposit that white in the middle. And again, you can kind of get that uh, jawbreaker look. And create some neat starburst effects and such with that technique. Mix up a light. Light bright orange, a little bit of white and orange, and then just a little bit of that bright yellow. darker green right around this one. I like the way that looks. I come in with some of that ultramarine blue around on my red create kind of a purplish look on this red. Add some white to it and get a lighter blue. And then paint over that and you get a more pure hue. Kind of like adding, acting, putting primer on your wall before you paint. Just gently kind of blend that out the outside there, yeah. So if you've got kids that are painting along with you, You could even use your fingers to paint along. Just saying, it, you know, fingertips will make some marks. Add a little paint onto them. Okay, so I like that. That looks pretty good. Maybe make a Just a little bit. Maybe not enough. Okay. 
comment. There we go. Yeah. Sometimes it's just easier to blend right on the canvas. You can grab a little bit here, grab a little bit there. A little more darker color, a little more lighter color. A lot of times, too, you blend on your palette and you don't know what it's going to look like until you, know, you get it up on your canvas there. So while I still have that wet, I'm going to come in and I'm going to do that trick with the red and the green again. Kind of wipe my brush off on my paper towel in between strokes that way any green that I've got on through there I'm not going to blend that in because I'm just using one edge of my brush on the inside one edge on the outside There's a lot I can do. The hardest part is knowing when to say when. But I'm going to grab a little bit of uh, some blue in on this guy here. And make a little mark around. ever seen uh, when someone puts sand on top of a, a level thing with, with the speaker underneath different different tones and sounds will make different patterns in the uh, in the sand and you know I think that that may have been you know this was in the 20s 30s 40s that Kandinsky was making artwork and I don't know maybe if they knew about all that at the time, but he definitely understood it. Add some nice bright yellow in on top of this pink and purple. there too.
get a couple more colors on there, I think. We're gonna step back, see how I'm enjoying it. And as I said, you know, the hardest part is knowing when to say when. Because we can take it one step too far and wish we hadn't. So be cautious of that. you're still working on a first couple of uh, squares and you don't have all of yours done, you know, just keep painting along. Gotta be careful, I may go a little too far with this yellow, but I'm liking it on all of these spots here, so I'm just going to keep going there. Coming along all right on yours. Don't forget to take a step back, see how it looks from a distance. You really see how colors look together, how the whole thing looks as a whole. And I think I'm gonna add a little bit more white into some spots here. And then call mine done. ugly brown actually I don't think there's really much ugly colors just ugly things associated with them a little orange and purple and green a little bit of red now some white
mix just some green and red. Some of that blue. I'm try and make kind of a dark, deep purplish color. And add a little purple to it too if you need to. And this is where I'm not using any black to, uh, to make some dark colors. But the illusion of those colors on top of other colors will make it look like black or a dark, you know, tone there. So I'm not adding any white, yellow, or orange to this concoction here. So I don't want to tint it, um, you know, make it any lighter, brighter than what it is. And it was in this guy here. I'm wondering that. look around see if you've got all of your edges everything looks pretty good uh, I think you can continue painting through on this until you get it to where you like it uh, I myself I have an issue with going too far on things uh, but I think that I've got a lot of great colors on through there um, had a lot of fun and just blending and mixing colors. Uh, I hope you've had fun doing this with me. Um, when you're done with your paints, um, if you still have a lot of paint on your palette, what you can do is you can give it a little mist uh, and then saran wrap over the top. It'll keep that wet so you can reuse it again. Um, you can grab another canvas or paper or a piece of wood and just keep painting uh, your heart out until you exhaust all the paint you have in your palette. Uh, you can do a lot of stuff with it. You can let it dry and then pluck it out, uh, scoop it out, start a paintball. Um, but when it comes to paint to cleaning your brushes, uh, you can take uh, some warm water and some mild soap. I use just the blue dish soap, a little bit in my hand, and what I'll do is then just kind of massage that around in my in the palm of my hand to get that paint out and then once uh, they're dry and rinsed then I'll wring it out a little bit very gently with my hands give it a little tap to get some of that excess off and then set it off to the side to dry uh, you can get some conditioners for your brushes that you then would put on so that it will hold those shapes that they are. But as long as you're not rough with your brushes and you keep them fairly clean and don't let a lot of paint build up in the bottom next to the ferrule, you should be all right. Uh, with these brushes lasting you a very long time. Uh, as you use them, you will see that they just kind of, uh, they naturally will, will get shorter and shorter uh, the more you use them. Um, so eventually you will have to buy new brushes um, and as we continue on through, I hope to offer um, different grades of kits with different uh, grades of brushes and maybe even different grades of paints. That way you can try some things out without having to go to the store and buy a you know, whole set. You can get a small amount uh, with this kit to, to then try. So, um, so keep an eye out for that and I want to thank you for joining me. Uh, recreating uh, Vasily Kandinsky's uh, color study squares with concentric circles. Uh, so I hope you had a lot of fun play, painting this uh, and again share those uh, finished paintings with us on our Facebook and our Instagram uh, and if you need this will be available on uh, the YouTube channel uh, so you can always come back and paint this master study with me again. So thank you again. Uh, have a great evening and I look forward to creating and sipping with you 